1998, so next year we'll be coming up on our 25 years, and uh, it's uh, really what I think is, is one of those hidden gems in our community. Uh, we have uh, independent living options for our seniors, so what that means is we, we cook and we clean and everybody just, uh, and we take care of the chores and, and everybody just lives their life the way they want to live it and uh, as a retiree. Uh, we try to have some activities, we offer some transportation, and uh, here before long I, I bet there will be a casino trip in the making. So, uh, <clears throat> the homestead is, is uh, uh, pretty affordable for almost any income level, uh, and it uh, certainly is a place that uh, we like to show off any chance we get. Uh, like I said, Carla and Karen do a great job out here. And, and, uh, Anytime anybody would like to, to come out and visit, um, just come on out. If you want to come out for a meal, give us a holler. We'll, we'll fix you up a meal or something, too. So, anyway, glad you all could make it this morning. I'm going to bolt. But uh, thank you, Jody. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you, Kelly. And um, I'll talk afterwards, but if um, I'll permit it or... So Dr. Murdoch would like to start. We'll just do it, and I'll give him some updates afterwards. What do you speak? What would you like, Carl? Uh, we're over here. I want to stand next to the president. Overview, and then we will let take questions. I'll let him talk what he wants to say, and then we'll take some questions. Basically, this is ends. I say three fourths done uh, on the bill the process. Uh, we had House bills are now on the Senate side, and they have just finished this. Yesterday was the end of committees, except for A and B, which is the budget committee. And you can have budget bills for another week, and then we can have joint budget bills for another three or four a month. And so that's where we're at. So we finished the committee process, and I was going to tell you, we've got the numbers here. Uh, we sent over 381 bills to the Senate, and only 284 of them made it to their committee. They sent over 327, and we had 271 that made out of the committee. I guess we like Senate bills better than than they like our House bills. <laughs> so, but that's where we're at right now. So we're, we're finishing up committee work. The next two weeks, we've got two weeks to get all the bills off our floor which means the whole group sitting in there voting on bills for the next two weeks. And so that's where we're at right now. <laughs> what I, what, just to, just give you a little heads up of how it works. When you start a bill out, it's generally your, I call it my baby, you know, like it's mine. You know, I, you take ownership of it. So a lot of times lobbyists and those people that want to change it or kill it, will not do anything with it that much until it gets on the opposite house. And so I've got a lot of my younger members of uh, the house are saying, I don't know why they killed all my bills over to the Senate. I said, well, you don't have ownership of this anymore. You need to pick a better senator. And so that's why I'm very picky on who I pick. I use Casey Murdoch. I use uh, uh, Darcy Yeck, and, and we're going to lose a good one, Zach Taylor, this year. Uh, I pick out good people that will take ownership. Well, and I think Casey knows when he sends a bill over to me, I take as much ownership as, as it is. Because I want, I know his heart is to do something and do it right. And so when I take it, I try to make sure we move it on through. And so a lot of them don't care. They said, I don't care. It's not my bill. You know, okay, kill it. And so, anyway, so that's why where we started out. We started out with, what I say, total between the two, we got about five or six hundred bills there, and we started out with fourteen hundred. Sounds right. So that's how much is filtered down. And you're that might have been on your side, huh? That might have been on your side. That might have been on our side. Because <laughs> I was thinking we had twelve. I think right. that's so 2,600 bills, and we're down to now about 600. <coughs> so that's the way it filters down. I'm, I'm and just that's kinda, a good thing, guys. Yeah, that's a good thing. You didn't want all those 2,600 bills being passed. Yeah, there was some bad yeah, stuff with that. Yeah. I, it's kind of funny. I, I'm winning an award from one group because I voted against the bill. So I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't know. There you go. Yeah. But anyway, that's. 
But that's that's kind of gives you an overview of where we're at. We're still working on the major things that we're still working on, of course, is budget to make sure we're driving. I know that there's going to be an increase in the budget. We're trying to keep it down as much as we can, but we, there is some things that we're hitting a little bit here and there. Uh, and so we are working on that still. Uh, medical marijuana is still another thing we're trying to get our hands on and try and do some regulations there. And then also we're uh, working on some of the school protests. Does Alba have a protest? <laughs> One or two. One or two. Yeah. You have a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so we got we got uh, pipelines and and so also some of the wind wind farms are coming off their the, the money we gave them. So we pay, we took care of their you know their taxes there for a while to help them get going and they're coming off and so they're having to pay their taxes. So there's a lot of tax protests that are, holds up. And when they do a protest, it's, it's not, it'd be all right if they protest for three months, but we got some that are going four and five years that are still a protest. Well, that ties up your schools, your county government, and those things from getting that money out there to be used in the county. And so we're trying to find a fair way to get this moved along, get it taken care of a little quicker. And so that's where I, what came to my mind when I said that they try to kill your bills with this. I've got some of the tax protests they're trying to kill over there. And so, anyway, it's an interesting game we play up there. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll stop there because I'd like to talk about what you want to talk about. Sit there, I'll let you talk for a while, and then we'll have some questions. Well, Carl, did a good job. He covered everything. Uh, <laughs> it's glad to be back. I'm sorry I missed uh, the last one, and, and I wished I'd gotten more snow. All the snow was in between me and, and uh, uh, home. I think uh, we had a horrible blizzard, and we didn't get a quarter of inch moisture, and I lost a cow and a baby calf. And uh, what's it? Dang the luck. If it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. But uh, no, the capital this year on the Senate side is a little. We're, we're, we're having a, a issue. It's, it's you know we're all the Senate family, but right now we're kind of a dysfunctional family. <laughs> uh, we explained it at Woodward. I thought the best, and, and Carl gave a, a excellent uh, analogy about how the Speaker of the House is the father, and the floor leader is the mother. The father kind of sets the course. The mother says, "You're going to eat these greens." And it's the same in the Senate. Uh, the, the pro tem of the Senate is kind of the, the dad, and the floor leader is kind of the mom. And I really don't like our floor leader. And then I uh, Woodward, I said, yeah, and dad kicked mom out. Now I've got a stepmom in there. And we don't get along. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's an interesting dynamic in, in the Senate. It's been tough. Uh, It's, it's, it's a lot of inner caucus politics and a lot of bills dying just because of the politics. Uh, actually, I take that back. It's not the policy, it's the personalities. And the pro tip got up in caucus one day and said, look, guys, we need to be voting on, on policies, not personalities. We know some of y'all don't get along, but it needs to be on policy. We had chairmen that would get mad and just, everybody who's mad wouldn't hear any of their bills. Just wipe them off the agenda. Uh, good policy bills. And it was, it was a little ridiculous. And uh, one day in leadership, I kind of, well, not kind of, I had enough of it. And a little Western Oklahoma came out of me. <laughs> They were holding up one of my bills. We, uh, it was back on the on the floor agenda the next day, but I had to show them a little bit of Western Oklahoma. Uh, other than that, we up until this last week, and it's it's my fault for, for screwing it up this past week because I almost the, the the gal that does my press releases came in and I almost had her put in the press release my my prediction. We were running along real smooth. 
as far as the budget, you know, I think we might get out as early as we've ever gotten out. And I don't know, in two and a half hours, things blew up between the House and the Senate and the Judiciary Committee. Just didn't hear any Senate bills. And it just, you never know. You never know what that little thing is that's going to happen that blows up the whole thing. So, uh, but I think we're getting it back on course. Um, I've got a few bills that made it. I've got, uh, I'm just kind of thinking, because I want to give you all time to uh, uh, ask questions. The one bill probably, and, and Carl said he's always got his, his baby pet bill, and I, I, I feel honored because I'm a Senate author of his pet bill. Uh, this, this is probably my number one bill, the one I'm passionate about, and it is uh, you can't discriminate against gun manufacturers. And this January, I went to Vegas to the SHOT Show. I went out with the uh, Department of Commerce. We were trying to recruit gun manufacturers to come to Oklahoma. And so that's probably why they came to me and wanted me to run this bill, as a, the gun manufacturers. But uh, there are Wall Street banks that will not loan money to a gun manufacturer if they manufacture high capacity magazines, or gun stores if they sell long rifles to anyone under 21. Uh, so I've got a bill that says if a company discri discriminates against a manufacturer of a gun business strictly because what they're doing, uh, they do not qualify for state contracts. So that's, that's my favorite bill. But I had the Bakers Association come in and they wanted me to shelve the bill, not here, not push it. And I said, this is, this is, there's no Oklahoma banks that's doing this. This is Bank of America, uh, Citibank are the two that I just coming off the top of my head. They're pushing their gun policies in the state of Oklahoma. Gun policies in the state of Oklahoma is set by that man right there. The House of Representatives. The legislature. Not an out-of-state Wall Street company. And if you pull back and look at what is going on, it is the anti-gun crowd, it is the uh, we need more gun control crowd that is pushing this. And the Bankers Association was in there wanting me to kill this bill. I'm like, no, no. Because think about this. And I don't know how many of you all have been in my office, uh, but I had a big picture of cows on one wall. Just about the whole wall is just one big picture of cows. And I said, look at those cows up there. Said, that's a neat picture, isn't it? He said, oh yeah, yeah, that's a neat picture. And I said, this is all policy and what's fashionable now in the woke crowd to go after. I said, what happens when they decide AOC's right and we need to go after these cows because they fart? And what happens when these banks decide they're not going to loan money to farmers because of the methane gas the cows are putting out? Now that sounds crazy right now, but 20 years ago, what we're going through today, I guarantee you we would have said, this, that's crazy, that will never happen. And that's, that's why I'm pushing this bill so hard. Is it goes back to the golden rule. The man who has the gold makes the rules. Well, you have ESG scores that they're loaning on, or whether they invest or not. Oklahoma is an oil and gas state. That is our number one driver of our economy. There is that, I don't have the bill, but there is a bill, just like my gun bill, that says the same thing about the oil and gas industry because you have companies that will not invest in oil and gas or loan money to oil and gas companies because their ESG score is not high. And that's environmental, government, and social score. Uh, it is a tax against fossil fuels. 
That's who we are. So why would the state of Oklahoma take your tax dollars and contract with companies that is attacking where you make your money at? So that's why I'm pushing this bill. Anyway, with that, I don't know where we're at with time. And as some of you all know, and Carl most definitely knows, that I can sit up here and talk for hours. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it off there. Uh, as the session gets longer, he gets quieter, though. Yeah. You finally get tired of talking. Though, First the session, I'm all going to go out. It's all day. But yeah, yeah. What questions do you have?
paid their part of the tax, they took care of their taxes for them for that long, but then when it came to them having to start picking it up, they said, whoa, we don't want to have to pay that much. And so well, they protested. And, and a lot of the problem there, when I first got elected into the House, there was a wind farm in Harper County, I believe it was Harper County, just, just north of Port Supply. And they were on that, the, the Adborn. The five year exam. The, yes, the five year exam. And they fell off of that. Well, the difference is when you're on the five year exam, you're at the centrally assessed value. And then you fall off, you go to the county assessed. And they're, they're not the same. So they were, they were evaluated differently. And they're like, oh, wait, no, this isn't the same as centrally assessed. Well, no, because now the county assessor is assessing you. And we need to we need to make that smoother. But right now, wind doesn't get that uh, exemption, so that's not going to be the issue anymore. Uh, but and it's not just wind. I mean, like I said, when I first got elected, DCP protested every year, uh, and and still does, and, and other companies protest every year. Uh, so it's not just wind doing the protesting. Uh, but we've got several bills this year, hopefully will help with those protests. Now, I will always defend your right to protest the taxes that the government is putting on you. That's your right as an American to protest those taxes. But we've got to, we've got to figure out how, how do we make, this is just going on and on and on. We've got to fix the system somehow. One of the bills, and I don't remember who is running it, but you can't talk to the Garfield assessor. Can't share information. Is that you? Yeah. I, I knew it was a good house member. I just couldn't remember which one. I'll let you. I won't talk about you. Uh, but we've got several bills out there to try to maybe reduce the amount of, of protest that's, that's going on. Yeah. My bill doesn't would allow county assessors to talk across county lines. Right now, Woods County Assessor cannot talk to Alfalfa County Assessor, even if there was a wind project that crossed the county lines. They can't talk about the assessment value on that between the two counties. However, they can hire a third party that knows all the counties and do that. And right now I'm getting kicked in the teeth because the, there's some uh, industry doesn't want that to happen because then everybody knows what's going on. They still have to keep it under confidentiality. You couldn't come over and ask the session, hey, how much is this? Well, and it's, and it's crazy. It needs to be done. And it's, this is several years. I think I was in the House when I ran this legislation. Um, oil jacks. Same oil jack in two different counties was valued totally different. And, you know, and it's the same oil company that owns all of them. And that's why you were getting protests. Well, Woods County, they, they're assessed here, and Alfalfa County, they're assessed here. Well, that's not right. Well, you guys can't talk. So, I mean, you're, it, I think it's just communications. I think, it, I think it's, it's not the end all, be all, fix all, but it will help the situation. Yeah. On, on, on kind of a different topic, in, in cryptocurrency, mining cryptocurrency, one of the biggest limiting factors is the energy cost. And a lot of companies are now going out to West Texas and using the flare gas to generate cheap electricity. We've got a lot of gas, and I'm not sure how much flare gas we have around here. But there's a very deep discussion about uh, trying to sanitize cryptocurrency mining and using the flare gas and the cheap energy that can be produced off that. I actually visited with, uh, I, it was GRDAs who I was visiting with. Week ago, it wasn't this week, it was a week ago, and there was a company wanting to do a data center, but that's what they, they were wanting. Uh, and they were talking to GRDA about coming in to their area and building. I said, Come to my area, I've got, I got the land, I've got the energy, and so I'm just starting to, to kind of work on that. But yeah, and, and what's so funny, this, this person is from Tulsa, and he said, Look, do you have land? And I'm like, yeah, we got that. I said, well, how much are you going to need? He goes, oh, man, we're, we're probably going to need 100 acres. <laughs> and I said, 
we got that covered. We're, we're good. To go along with this, I know there's some interest around this area because we do have a high, uh, or maybe not the other, but we do have a high energy uh, potential out here. So well, we have the lowest cost of energy electricity in the United States. It's right here in Oklahoma. Uh, so it, it just makes sense that they, these companies would come to us. And, and, and not to bring up the battle between green and, and, and fossil fuels, uh, but we've got a boat. And if a company is wanting to say they are 100% green energy, they can come to Oklahoma. If they want to come in and, and use both, they can come to Oklahoma. I mean, we are an energy state across the board. We have it all. So we are very attractive uh, for these companies to move in. Yes? Uh, what's the status of the ARPA funds? I knew you were going to ask me that. When I was taking a shower, I'm like, I'm going to get this question. Uh, the easiest answer I can say is government. It's what? Government. Oh, it's slow. It's slow. <laughs> so, How much money did you guys set aside for nursing? Nursing? Fifty million? I was saying it's fifty million. Fifty million and yeah, I was there's, we, school, there's a college real close to here. I've heard this flag for that. I don't know. <laughs> so I didn't see that flag and I heard where these other schools was getting it and I was fixing to get a little upset and in the committee that I'm on, the, the paperwork I got, you guys were giving some so. uh, I I didn't have to burn as well. Uh, but no, it's just slow. So we were meeting, well, last summer I was at the Capitol every week. So I'm on the main committee and then I'm on a subcommittee. And for some reason they couldn't meet the same week. They would meet one week and the next committee the next week. And I was at the Capitol every week, all summer long. And then Thanksgiving comes and we quit meeting. And I thought, well, you know, we're going to get through the holidays and we'll start meeting again. We've met three times since session started. I thought maybe we, we cranked up and start meeting some more, but it's just, it's slow. Uh, there's 18, 18 billion dollars worth of requests. Uh, we have 1.8 billion to hand out. There's like 1,500 projects that we have to go through. And we are dotting every I and crossing every T. Because now this is before my time, but I guess in 08 the state got a lot of federal dollars to hand out, and they messed it up, and they had to give it back. And we we don't want to have to give it back, so we are making sure that everything is done just right. And aren't you also looking at things that are broad range, like like you said, nursing, broadband, that affect the whole state, mm -hmm. and then they're going to look at after they get those covered, they're going to come back in and look at. Things that will infrastructure, like infrastructure change you can do, but you can't do economic development, right? So it has to be COVID related. Uh, it is supposed to be to underserved areas of the state. Can you find underserved? No. <laughs> I can show you underserved. Just come to my district and let's drive around. Yeah. Uh, but underserved areas, and it's one of the committees that I, the subcommittee that I was on, water was in there, but I guess we had gotten so many water requests for water projects, uh, they made it its own uh, subcommittee, and I'm not on that one, but it's just, it's just slow. And, and I get calls and emails all the time, and, and my best answer is just, it's just go. And, and I would say most of the communities that, that we serve, water infrastructure is our number one request. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see some of those coming through. And that's, that's my best answer. And we are, so my subcommittee, we're meeting, and, and so we have guide house uh, hired, and they go through. <coughs> And uh, the, the request first, and they what they do is they make sure they qualify uh, under the, the, the regulations that this this qualifies. And once they say.
say they qualify, then my committee goes through it, and then we vote on do we want to move forward with this project, and if we want to move forward, then we'll call them in and they present in front of the committee. And so when just there's a lot of moving parts on how we're handling this, and it's just it, when you figure how many requests we have, it's just taking some time. So the, the requests that don't meet the criteria, are those requests being notified, stating they don't meet the right criteria? I, I don't know where they are. I can find out. I, I don't think they're, I, I don't think we know that, that all these requests haven't met the criteria. Like we're doing broad, broad, broad things first, and then we're going to look at the other, other things. I mean, well, there's been some that guide house that in, in some of our subcommittees that said no, we, we've asked about this or that because oh no that one didn't qualify. Well, that, and, you don't know if been... and I don't know if they've been notified that no this doesn't qualify. Uh, I don't I don't know. But I can find that out if they're being notified. Other questions? Gosh we're doing a good job. <laughs> Come on. Really? No, but, but, you know, right now is, is crunch time. I mean, last two weeks have been crazy for me, and I know they have been for you. Try Basically, you've got to decide if you're going to get something through, you've got to fight for it. And so now is what we call uh, fighting. I mean, you fight for a bill. Uh, one of the ones that I just recently did was a poll attachment that made it over into the Senate. Have, have you heard anything on that? It passed. Okay. I mean, but oh wait, yeah, it has to. After four years of working on that, <laughs> uh, and this is just sick. I'm sorry, Carl. We should have had this conversation without the crowd. You might get mad. <laughs> Thirty-eight, thirty-five. I don't know the number. I just I'm, it's, okay. I don't know. I'll I, do I, well, I've heard it's still going. But basically, what we're trying to do is get broadband out here to rural areas. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to bury it all. It's out of sight, out of mind, all that kind of stuff. But guess what? It's very costly. And we're trying to get it here. And that, that last mile, at least, or that last branching out or miles needs to be put on poles and, and carry it. And so you have electric companies that hold poles. And so we were trying to coordinate broadband companies with electric, rural electric co-ops and that kind of stuff. And so we were trying to mesh those two together. And two industries don't always want to agree on things. You know, broadband wanted to put it, the electric, rural electric companies put them up there for nothing. You know, well, that's not fair. And, you know, because when the lines go down, that rural electric guy's got to go out there and fix the line, and then there's another cable that broke and just spun up there right around them, and they're dealing with high voltage electricity. And so well, the other thing is there's more weight on the pole. What, what's one thing that happens out here almost every day? That wind blows. So that's just one other thing that they're catching the wind. A little more weight on the pole, so they are going to have, uh, in, in our part of the world, these poles are going to go down because you're adding more weight to it and, and a, a broader surface for that wind to catch and push on. So, and so they, they should be getting paid. So we got it finally worked out this, and that was one of the bills I was fighting on. You know, the Would the rule go up for your deal? We were real close for, for my deal. Okay, then, then you're good. Yeah. It was the other side. That, I just heard that the other side was very, yeah, very mad. There's, it's it's on that. the uh, right of way. That, they're mad about the right of way deal. Because they want to tie on the rural electric co-ops right away and say, hey, rural electric co-ops right away, we'll get you to use theirs. And people aren't wanting to do that. Because your personal property rights, you gave the right of way to the electric company to put a line in. Did you for say? electricity. Huh? For electricity. For electricity. Did you say that they gave them the right of way to put a, a broadband in? Not necessarily. So why should the broadband company come in and invade your property without you having a right to protect that? And so that's part of that. That's the that's the one he's talking about. Yeah. So, but things like that. That's why I guess I'm giving you trying to give you an example. These are things we fight over right now. We're trying to get these bills through. Trying to make some difference for rural Oklahoma, especially like a broadband like that, because it's it's huge for us. And you know the ones that's funny to me, and it's just Carl talking, not not Casey, not the House, not the Senate. 
It's funny to me, it's these big city companies that are fussing about the rural deals that haven't put, when they've come out here, they haven't done the service that they needed to anyway, and yet they're trying to fight to make sure they make plenty of money off us. Well, they're going to cherry pick. They might pick an Eden, they may pick a Woodward, they may pick an Alba, but they're not going to go pick a Burlington or something like that to put a lot in. You know, and so they're wanting to cherry pick and make sure they're getting money out of all these deals that they're doing, but they're not really concerned about rural Oklahoma. Well, there's a good company in Enid, Chisholm Broadband, that is, yeah. the last mile, and, and they are, uh, I met with them, well, we both met with them a few months ago, and I, I think what they're doing is, is ingenious and, and needed. It is where, and, and I'm not even going to pick on a Cox Communication or a, or a uh, AT&T, AT you know, a pioneer. Uh, they can only go so far, and they this this Chisholm company is going that last mile, and that, that's their model. We, we go that last mile. We provide service that last mile that that maybe Pioneer won't go. I know I had a constituent not too far from here uh, called me and was upset because Pioneer had ran fiber within two miles of her house, and she doesn't have internet. They've tried everything. They've tried HughesNet, you know, the satellite. They just can't get good internet. And she was hot. It was two miles. Why can't they just come down here? And they wouldn't do it. But I got her in contact with Chisholm, and it's line of sight. But that's close enough. When they get within two miles, it's close enough. They can keep them. This company can go in and, and go ahead and go to those final, that final mile and get your service. So we're, we are getting close, but we're fortunate. Uh, you get to Eastern Oklahoma, and they have no service. There's there's places it's it's horrible out there. I blame it on those all those damn trees. <laughs> it makes it line of sight a lot harder. Line of sight doesn't work back there. Yeah. Other questions? Well, thank you very much for letting us. Work. One other thing. So you. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. The hard part of the capital is fixing to start right now for for Carl and I. Uh, because Carl just mentioned to you about all the bills that died, how many bills were filed, how many bills were died, and I made the comment a lot of those bills needed to die. Well, we're, you know, in how things work, everything didn't make it out of committee, it's dead. We just move on forward. But we have a deal coming up called the conference committee. And that is when Carl and I have to pay attention because those bills that we killed that were bad, that building down there, I, I've called it Lazarus several times because something that's dead and you think it's dead and it needs to be dead will come back to life. And it will show up in a conference committee bill and you'll, you'll never hear about it until it hits the floor. And so... This is a time that we really, Carl and I, as far as protecting our district in northwest Oklahoma, this is when we really have to pay attention because all those battles we have fought up to now to kill bad bills for, that affects northwest Oklahoma could pop back up if we're not paying attention. With that, thank you for letting us serve you and work for you. And if you have any input, holler me. I'll be around for a little bit. He'll be around for a little bit. We'd love to talk to you. But Jody, thank you for, yes, thank you. for having us here. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you guys coming. It means a lot. And you guys will be back in June. I don't have that date on the top of my head. But... 17th. Oh, thank you. But my birthday is the 16th, oh. so I don't know. Oh, wow. Well, I'll be here. Else? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much. Um, like I said, I'll kind of keep this short, but um, this week the Chamber's been working on doing um, our new community guide, and Karen is with us, and she has been going around and selling the ads, and we're so excited to have this book. It's been so much fun this week. So you want to get your little spin? <laughs> sure. Um, well, thank you guys for uh, supporting the Chamber. Chambers are very important especially in smaller communities, which is one reason that I team up with Chambers, uh, because the Chambers are the best at telling the story of the community. Um, 
so that's kind of what we're doing. We want to tell the story of the community, and so we are going to have a community guide, which looks like a magazine. Um, it's going to be an annual uh, uh, publication. Um, it's going to be who, what, when, where, why, lots of history. Uh, if you're in Alba, you can check out these things. Um, there will be a little bit about what is in and around Alba so that people know what they can go do as well. Um, but I'll be here, I was going to say all week, but today's the last day. Um, I'll be here today. If you have more questions, would like to be involved, have ideas, um, just give us a call and we'll, we'll try to make that happen. Can I give a congrats to you, uh, I mean, kudos to you guys if they came out. These ladies were at the, at the Capitol going around to each office and sharing the story of ALBA with all the legislators across the state, Senate and House side, and so it's, it's an effort. It's a big building to cover, isn't it? How and many so, steps was it, Melissa? Like, what? How many steps? It was like 4,000 or something? Yeah, I can't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I can imagine. <laughs> but anyway, it was great to have them up there. They're telling your story. They're promoting your community, and so and that's kudos important. to them. Yeah, it is. That's important. So when yeah. we have an issue that we need to get other senators or other reps uh, to support us, they'll say, oh, yeah, Alba came by our office. Yeah. And so it's easier. And I did hear that. Um, somebody said that they were somewhere and they heard that we came by. So that was huge to hear that from me. So yeah. we had a fun day. It, it was fun. It was very, I've never been to the Capitol. And so it was really interesting. You guys were very welcoming. Everybody was very. Everyone was so welcoming. Yeah. We were so impressed. And I really still think that you may have paid them a lot of money. <laughs>